Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good to see all of you. What a great day. We're here to worship God, and I am so glad you are here to praise God and worship God the Almighty. Let us worship.
Those who are able, would you stand for the reading of the gospel? The gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 11. Hear the word of God according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants and children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Oh God, what a refreshing word you have for us. There are times that we feel weary, not just physically, but our soul seems to be weary. I pray, Lord, that you would refresh our souls, that you would invigorate our souls through your presence, through your spirit, and through your word. Lord, may all the words of my mouth and all the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You are indeed our rock and our Savior and our Messiah. In the name of our Lord, we pray. Amen. I know, <laughs> I don't know who picked this passage, but what an appropriate passage for us. Some of you know that October is a very busy month for us clergy, especially Methodist clergy, because all the reports are due in October. And I want you to know that I probably spent over 40 hours last week alone on Zoom meetings. I'm not talking about visiting and doing church work, just the Zoom meetings. Talking about weary, here I am. So God has given to us just the right passage. Not just for our physical bodies, but our weary soul as well. You see in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when God created us, God created our body out of the dust. God created our physical body out of the dust. And God breathed into us his breath and gave us his spirit. And oftentimes I think that God's breath, God's spirit, we call it our soul. So we have our body that is perishable, and then we have our soul that resides in our body and the soul, the breath of God, the spirit of God eventually will go back to God. When your body is weary, tired, just exhausted, what do you guys do? Do you go run another marathon? I hope not. I hope you put your feet up. Turn on some good, relaxing music. Get a good book. No coffee, just relaxing tea. And just rest your body. But when your soul is weary, when your soul feels heavy, when you are just exhausted inside, what do you do? How do you relax? How do you unwind? What do you do? I was sharing with my Bible study about what I do. 
I often imagine that I am in God's arms. God is looking at me, rocking me back and forth, just like we do with a baby. God is doting on me, looking at me. And God says, I love you. You are mine. I know you're weary. God is rocking me back and forth and comforting me and giving me that peace, even joy. What do you do when your soul is weary? Some of us, we're not even self-aware. We don't even know if our physical body is tired. I hope you all know when you're physically tired. Some of us don't know when our souls are tired. I hope you're self-aware enough when your soul is tired and weary that you know it. I have a friend who is deeply spiritual and her soul is trained, the, her soul is fit and strong, and she does it with different spiritual practices. Of course, she prays, she meditates, she connects with God and with others, she lives a simple life, and, and everything is centered around God. And every time my soul is weary and tired, I look to her and I ask for advice. And she always tells me to just quiet down and be in the arms of God. Rock back and forth and back and forth and bask in God's love, unconditional love. It's not about what I've done, what I haven't done. It's not about good enough, not good enough. Just blank, just rest in God's arms. And she says that she can feel God's presence, but she can also feel her soul. How many of you have felt your soul? She says her soul resides right here. She can feel her soul right here in between the eyes. I've always felt my soul in my hands. Have you thought about that? Where's your soul? I've always thought my souls were in my hands. A lot of people think their souls are in their hearts. Some of them think in their brain, right up here in the cranium. Are you self-aware enough? You can feel your soul. Are you self-aware enough that your soul needs something? Are you self-aware enough that your soul is weary? You know, our bodies have distinctive features. As you can see, I have small hands and feet. My children have outgrown my shoes. <laughs> and I'm Asian, round face, a little bit flat, and with slanted eyes that are small. I'm short in stature, although I've never felt in my whole life that I was short. I've always felt tall, not because what I've accomplished, not because what I have done, because I know whose I am. God has always given me this confidence and this joy, this peace in my heart. Our physical bodies have distinctive features. And I was really happy to find out after an extensive DNA testing that I do not carry any bad genes that cause cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, any genetic disorder. It was kind of relief for me. But I know that if I develop any of those diseases, it's all my fault. It's all my habits. It's all my lifestyle. But our souls are different. There is no such thing as Asian soul. Did you know that? There is no such thing as black soul. There is no such thing as white soul. There is no such thing as Italian soul. 
There's no such thing as Mexican soul. We're all made of God's breath. Same breath. And we are of one stock, one genetics. We are all children of God. That's why racism, prejudice, bias are so harmful. Not just harmful in our community, but also sinful and harmful to our souls. There are no rich souls either. There are no poor souls. Sometimes we are measured by our portfolios, stock portfolios or our bank accounts, but our souls are measured only by our generosity. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine that? Our souls are measured by our generosity. And just like our bodies can be diseased because of genetics, because of our lifestyle, because of injury, our souls can be diseased, can be injured, can be wounded. When our bodies are diseased and sick, we go see a physical doctor, a physician. That, that's why they're called physicians. We go sometimes see a surgeon to get things removed. We all had one or two of that <laughs> experience under our belt, right? I'm lucky enough that I've never been to the hospital except when I had Lee. And that was bad enough. <laughs> but when our soul is diseased and sick and weary, what do we do? When our souls are diseased, when our souls are injured and wounded, we must seek pastors. We must seek spiritual healers, spiritual directors. We must seek God where there is wholeness, where there is healing. In the, in the first century AD, when Jesus lived, life was challenging. I always think it was more challenging than now, but life is always challenging. It was challenging back then, it's challenging now. Maybe physical labor has decreased since the first century AD, but every century, every country, every individual, we are always challenged by life's burdens. I had a wonderful time with Barry's students on Friday. I participated in, in uh, Mountain Day activities. And I was the obstacle course, my husband and I, we were the obstacle course uh, directors. And it wasn't just physical games. We, are, we were imparting the knowledge and experience and inspiration for all these adult, young adults and youth to go through in life. We said there are many obstacles in life. There's, life is completely fair. Everybody is faced with obstacles. What do you do when you have obstacles in your, in your life? You keep on going. You know that it's not permanent. It's temporary. You keep on going one foot after another. The next course was the Frisbee. You know, you, you, have you thrown a Frisbee? You throw it, you think it's going to go the way you throw it? No, it's the opposite. It's like a curveball. Life throws you so many curveballs. What do you do? You try and try and try again. And then there were beanbags. I said, Wayne, uh, aim far. Don't try to get the baskets near you. Aim far. And if you don't make it the first time, correct your mistake and move on and do it better next time. You keep on going. Life is challenging. Life have, has many obstacle courses. 
We as human beings, because we are fallen, we have to carry a lot of burdens, a lot of sorrows, a lot of difficult things, have to go through difficult obstacles in life. But I want you to know there's also a lot of joy, a lot of accomplishments, a lot of fulfillment that come from being human. Being human with limitations, with sin, even with suffering and destructions and shortcomings. There are so many people in the world who live their entire lives not knowing who they are, what they're up against, and how they can go through it. And there are also a lot of people in life not knowing how they talk, how they behave, how they act, how they live are toxic and harming and destroying community spirit and also the spirit of God. It's so important that we be self-aware. Sin, suffering, limitations, and frustrations, misfortunes, tragedies, all these, all these things may be natural. All these may, may be endemic to life. But Christian life, which we sum it up as hope, faith, and love, is always a choice. It's always a choice. Do I continue to live a life that is toxic? Do I continue to live a life that is rude, selfish, and controlling? It's up to us. It's a choice that we make. Time after time, we choose against faith, against hope, and against love. Slipping into a familiar pattern of evasion. Blaming others. I can't do it otherwise. But we have a choice to live a life that is of faith, that is of hope, that is of love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, well, I'm starting this soul series because as I meet and talk and encounter different people, they carry a lot of wounds in their souls. Some of those wounds are self-inflicted. Some of those wounds are inflicted by others, well-meaning, even well-meaning Christians. How can we get well? How can we be made whole? Is the whole purpose of this series. And listen, become more self-aware, but most of all, become more God-aware. Know that you have God's breath in you, God's spirit in you. How awesome is that? And God's intention is for you to be well, healthy, not just physically, but spiritually. John Wesley's question every time he met with his pastors, every time he met with his parish members, church members, do you know what it was? How is it with your soul? This day, I want you to ask that question. How is it with your soul? In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.